Um, so today I'm going to talk about expressions. But first, as a non-computer science background person trying to become one, I wanted to talk about vocabulary a little bit. Like, I think prior to this chapter, I would just throw around the words evaluating and parsing and like, no, 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 those are very different things. But I still don't have a very concrete definition for these words and also their relationships to each other. So I'm going to throw out some stuff on slides, but I'm hoping that people will chime in and be like, ah, Maya, your mental model is completely wrong. Like, don't take these comments for face value. These are not from the book. This is me trying to understand. And maybe we can talk about these relationships. So um, an expression is a list of calls where expressions are not text, they're of class expression, and you can create those expressions through parsing text, and then you can make them back into text again via deparsing. And this whole crazy loop of parsing and deparsing is important why. Um, I've I guess I'm trying to understand this chapter from two perspectives. One is as a human being, I can manipulate um, calls prior to them being evaluated. We're not even getting, I didn't even touch that word yet. Um, and you can do cool stuff upstream. And then I was a little bit fuzzy on like, that's me as a developer parsing and messing with parsing. But the computer itself, this magical thing, also is a part, there's a parser in there. And I was doing a lot of Googling. Is that right? Like your yeah. parser, no? Yeah. Because the parser and, and com the parser takes compiled code and turns that into what we want it to be. Like that's, no, the that's parser. my the parser takes the bare text and converts it into something that can be interpreted by the computer. It comes really before compiling or the first stage of compiling. Okay. So, so what me as a human is doing parsing text, that's kind of the same thing as what the computer is doing prior to compiling. Yeah, sort of. I mean, you as, okay. a, com as a person reading it, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you parse cool. a sentence, like here's the subject and here's the verb and there's a direct object and the computer has to do the same thing. Like, oh, this is an assignment statement. I get it. This is a function call. Right. So um, I'm going to show you the end of the talk right now. Um, that may not come to be, but I'm very, um, I don't know, maybe I'm dumb, but I like concrete, hard applications of these chapters in order for them to really cement. So I thought we could build together a pedagogical tool that does not create a fancy nested tree. You would just apply a function, the number of arguments that it takes, this is wrong, and this is wrong, but essentially it would put spit out the constructed call and the AST based on that constructed call. And what I was thinking behind the scenes, this would requires to use all the functions in this chapter, but maybe some functions in the later chapters. And maybe this is very ambitious or stupid exercise. I don't know, but I thought it would be fun to do. So I kind of, I like showing a picture of the recipe prior to giving out all the its components. So here's kind of just throwing that out there. Also, we can like discuss this in the, in the Slack, but again, thinking about how do I use all these functions that um, Hadley introduces? So, all right, um, kind of piggybacking off of what we were just talking about, how does the computer parse things in order to be compiled? You have an abstract syntax tree. And my understanding is I, as a human being, gain nothing from this, except for understanding how the computer is thinking about the code that we're writing. 
Um, and it's called abstract because um, quotes are implicit and comments are included and things like that. You can have, depending on the language, nodes can clump together some uh, units of code or whatever you computer sciencey people call it. But um, <clears throat> this AST function allows you to look at these relationships um, and wrap your head around but like, I guess I was thinking about like, how would I say this code out loud? And then this is how the computer would say it in English or computer, I guess. Um, so that's kind of what I got from this section that we're trying to understand how the computer thinks. I think, uh, yeah, that it's the way that the computer would say it out loud is kind of, it's an interesting way to look at it. Like, I, I think that... <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously, it's not exactly that because it wouldn't say it out loud, but it is like looking at how how it's being yeah, parsed. I, I realize I'm personifying my yeah. little math book, <laughs> <laughs> but she's been good to me. Okay. Um, all right. So now getting into expressions themselves. So you have constant symbols and calls. Constants are itty bitty syntax literals. You have numerics, doubles. You can't have an imaginary number. Are complex, I think, can't be represented. And then I have this tiny note here. Constants are self-quoting, which means within this um, character string, I didn't have to write expression, the XPR function, wrap that in there. Uh, um, it'll do it by itself. So that's a constant. That's a little list of our new friends. And then we move up to symbols, which represent the name of an object. And again, expressions are not the same as strings. I wanted to show one of my favorite applications of this because cough tan, I'm very shiny focused. Um, if you evaluate a string, which could be like a shiny input, that's not going to do anything. Um, this is what the data looked like prior to filtering. But if you evaluate a symbol, then the pliers filter knows what you're trying to do. So I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in with like their most commonly encountered sim function in source code, but that, this is how I use it all the time um, in like shiny turning strings into symbols and then evaluating those columns. Cool. All right, calls. So this section is when my gear started turning for that shiny app um, where you have an expression of oh, a function. Maya, I have a question. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sure. So, do you no? It was just some, the last sentence. I I just uh, I was just wondering what you meant. So, do you actually really convert all your strings to symbols, and that's how you parse them, like in your regular code, or is that for any particular reason uh, that you in, do that? If I'm gonna like make a shiny app where there's a select input, a drop down of like all the column names, Shiny's gonna return that to me as a text string. So I have to turn that into a uh, symbol but if okay, i'm just like okay. if i'm doing my own data science pipeline that for no like that would just be converting it to a text just to convert it back um that's yeah that's exactly what i thought and i didn't know if you were doing that just to like no be really really conscientious about your programming so that's why I no okay. i think that's i think that if someone was writing their code like that you <laughs> would be like lulz why um yeah. Again, I'm just trying to grasp at like applications for these things. Um, not that I don't just love Hadley's examples, but I think expanding on them is good. Okay. So back to calls. So you can, calls are different from functions because they're stringified functions, but not really. They're more like a list. Um, and they're of type language, which is like, okay, just throw more weird stuff at this. Um, but we, what I thought was cool 
is we can leverage this prior to a function being evaluated and shove in new stuff into our function before it's evaluated. So like in this, by turning this filtering expression, uh, this filtering function into an expression, um, I could potentially now subset my list of arguments and instead of review overall, I could put in some other st st text string through string replacement. This seems like really convoluted and there's better ways to do this, but I'm just trying to think about scenarios in which you would um, leverage this. And then this also left me with a question of if you look at the list that by creating this function um, as a call, we turn it into this list and as list of X here, we get the subcomponents, the arguments. I was wondering why is review underscore overall, why is this part one unit? But when we look at the AST, those are, that's actually three things. You can subset that as well. Okay, so I could have gone X bracket bracket two, bracket one, bracket even yes. deeper. Yep. Sick. So you really can change things. I mean, it sounds like expert level string manipulation to take a call and then shove in different strings where you want them. Um, but yeah, in terms of, were you going to say something? Uh, just, yes. Like I, I, every, every case I've ever really had for it is like trying to use this still. I still don't have any where I need this. I mean, all the factory stuff, like I, I need this stuff because I'm doing something nerdy in order to use this stuff you know right right <laughs> so and that and that alone is awesome like i'm trying to again like that shiny app is like a pedagogical learning tool of like so for in terms of execution i was thinking you can like based on the function that the user supplies create this empty list and then shove in all those strings as the arguments down the road i don't know these are just food for thought. So yeah, that's that's calls. That's me attempting to explain calls. Well, now, so I have I have a suggest well, I have a thought. Yeah. What if you have a really complicated deep layer uh, data manipulation string, and then let's say you can manipulate your data frame or your data set to have the same column. So let's say hypothetically you have a, a deep, like multiple data sets which basically have the same data, but then the columns could be different. So in theory, you could build up your um, your very complicated deep layer string. Like, let's say you take, you take it through multiple rounds of, you know, just all kinds of uh, transformations. And then if you can change your data frames to all have the same column names, like could, could you then not like use this and apply it like across all of them, like in, in, in a sort of like a map or something like that, like one of those vectorized um, calls, like what? Could, could that be like a possible application? I get what you're saying, but I feel like there's nine different other ways that I would do that before doing it that way, you know? Okay. Like like just dealing with the, the real code. Like you could change all the column names. Or make a know? function that does that instead of a function, or instead of making a function that pulls apart your calls and makes it. I can see... It, I haven't done this yet, but someday all of my packages for work will be a data set that I'm using to analyze my packages for work. And then I can see using all this stuff to like pull apart the code for the packages and look at how I did things. Maybe. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'll say, yeah. I'll say one, one time I've used it is there are some function I needed to use and it was causing an error and it wasn't really important. I just wanted to get past it. Um, so 
I could just modify the way the function worked by changing the code and zapping that one element. So it uh, basically just remove that line of code from the function. And nice. I like there, that brute force. Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's other ways it could have been done, but uh, it, it worked. Another one kind of related that I have this, you know, package idea in the background that I want to make a package that takes um, like all your imports and does as much of it as it can to just convert it all to base R to, to reduce your imports for like, if you're trying to run something in a really small Docker container or something like that. Um, and that would be another case where you like take the call and modify and like copy the call and do things with the call itself. Um, so would you be converting tidyverse code to base our code? Uh, yes, although tidyverse code, a lot of it has C or C++ underneath, and so there's oh. extra fun stuff you have to do there. But that's the idea. That is, an, and actually, um, Yanni CD has a package that's similar to that that I'm going to start from probably. But That's yeah, think, kind of, oh, sorry. Uh, ahead, I was going to say, I, I think there's a, there's a package called like pipe breaker or something like that that will take a long pipe chain and then break it down into you know individual steps um, and basically like you know assign the output of one pipe to a temporary variable that's then fed into the next element of pipe and uh, I, I would imagine that works using some kind of call manipulation like this. Yeah and that late, lot, kind of line of thought um, what keeps coming up in my head is um, like DB plier and like turning SQL stuff, translating code into other languages. I feel like that's when you need to think about the AST, like go up all the way to there. And then how would SQL do it? How would Python do it? Um, yeah, like, a... this is like a huge digression, but I worked on this project tidy blocks as an R studio intern where it's like a drag and drop interface for coding like for kids to learn how to code and you can and each block has like a backside generator of actual code so I think that's kind of like you know converting languages into other languages we had to do a lot of string shenanigans um, so I was trying to think of other applications yeah. than that but yeah um, John, I'm excited about that package, and now it's forever <laughs> recorded, and we're all going to hold you to it. <laughs> all right. It's, it's called independent, by the way. That's independent. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no R in that. Okay. Parsing and grammar was the next section. Um, I just made... Uh, I took this section, operator precedence, to kind of mean like... This is the computer's version of PEMDAS. Like this is how the computer will uh, decide what order to do things in. I highlighted the any because I thought it was cool to note where in the pecking order of things your like custom infix would go. And then as a note here, uh, some of these guys are right associative. So that's kind of just the order of things. I stole that from the help page. All right, parsing. This is probably, to me, the most like valuable tool in, of the function toolbox of this chapter that, again, creating these fake shiny inputs of like that mean was a function and these are the two strings the user uh, returns. We can parse these expressions Parse, use the function parse expressions to turn them into expressions rather than strings. Um, is this the way that we would do this? I don't know. There's like awesome discussion in the Slack channel about how to go about doing this. It doesn't sound like anyone's super psyched on their answers. <laughs> it's better than what I did. Um, so that's parsing. On the other side of things, you could deparse, which is turning your expression back into text and I was trying to rack my head around when you would do this and is it to tell someone that they tried to do something dumb. So I wrote a function here 
that takes on three arguments and it literally just spits out the error. LOL, you seriously tried to ex turn it back into from expression to text, quoting X plus Y plus Z. And it called it my mean function because that's pretty rude. Um, my follow-up question, uh, due to time, I wasn't able to figure out, I want the users one, three, and two to, to be in this X, Y, and Z. I think by quoting it, I messed that up. Um, so I might throw that in the Slack if anyone wants a fun challenge. Uh, but that was my best case scenario for deparsing. Does anyone else, I mean, <laughs> Yeah. They used a lot in the base plot functions and ggplot also for labeling axes. Remember, oh. I, if you say plot, you know, x, y, how does it know that the x axis should be x and the y axis should be y? It's using the oh. course. Nice. That is very applicable. Love it. All right. I didn't want to talk about this part of the chapter at all. Um, it's a little daunting to me, uh, but my high level understanding is we can create recursive functions to search within the tree, like nested nasty trees. And the examples are like to find all the cases of true false or something like that. But I was wondering for the shiny app purposes, what, First, I want to get it working for like just that simple function. Um, but could you like revert, use the like reverse of this section to create nested trees? I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas and some of them are horrible. But I was kind of thinking about this chapter in the reverse way. If anyone has questions about this part of the chapter, I'm not going to be able to answer them but I tried. Um, again, I don't know, like I'm, I'm just justifying it. Like I don't know how um, much your daily R user is gonna come into contact with needing to recurse through an AST, but maybe I'm wrong. All right, this takes us to the last section of my very short talk here, perilous missing arguments and expression vectors, which to me kind of sounded like, a, oh yeah, here's all the other stuff. Um, so when you create an expression from a function, as we did with, when we constructed our calls, this creates a dotted pair list. And if you'll see here, I created this expression. I created the exact same thing as a list. These two things are not equal. Um, and then in the chapter it says it's different because it's a linked list instead of an array to which I pose to the group, what is a linked list? What is a dotted pair list? How are these different? Do I care? You have Scouts. any Lisp experience? I believe a dotted pair list is basically like a Lisp car catter list, where you've got a cell with two object, two spots in it. The first spot is a value, and the second spot will point to another cell, and you just keep linking them together that way, as opposed to oh. a list, which is just a bunch of slots, and each slot has a value in it. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. So is a linked list a class type or is that just like a way to talk about a type of list? It's a data type. It's different from a, it's a data type where you have one element points to the next and that points to the next and that points to the next. But like, is there, an S, is there like an S3 linked list or no? No, it's more, it's, it's built in, the pair list is built, a built in type. Like a better. Okay. It's more of a under the hood in the C level implementation. Got it. Yeah. By got it, I mean, kind of. Um, 
And then in order to create this list on the right, um, because Z is not anything here, it's just like an empty symbol, I had to use this function missing arg, which is our next section here, that you can just create this like expression empty slot, kind of, is how I'm understanding it. And that's what I was also thinking in terms of the Shiny app, because we make the user say how many arguments they want. Maybe you can just make mean three missing arguments and then shove in the text for what those arguments are. Um, I don't know. But so that's kind of where I was thinking about a use case for missing arg. I don't know of one besides that. I am going to go dig. I swear that I used that somewhere in factory and I don't remember. Show the class. I'm, I'm seeing if I can show the class. Cool. Um, um, while you're doing that, I'll just show you my very not impressive last slide here that it takes us to expression vectors where um, Hadley uses the function parse, but I'm not sure when parse is preferable to parse underscore, like Arling's parse, are they the same? No, parse, the Arlang has like parse expression and parse clo and closures and it takes different inputs. The base parse is either going to parse a, a file or a text string. Okay, <laughs> that, make, that makes sense. And another thing was a lot of these functions, when I question marked them, they're all kind of soft deprecated for like quo underscore some other function. So I don't know, maybe that would be a fun activity I could do to like uh, turn this book into what is now preferable for all these functions. But because they had the prefix, prefix QUO, I was like, oh, we're not up to the closures chapter. So I'm scared of that. But yeah, that's, that's, that's the whole thing. I hope was fun fodder for discussion. Um, and yeah, if you if you guys want to look at that Shining app, I don't know if it's a complete waste of time or I could just throw it in the Slack if people are more like, I want to look at that and think about it. Watching you code makes me want to vomit. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to play with it. Um, and I use missing arg. Uh, it's nothing exciting. It's basically, I'm, I'm trying to pass along the fact that an argument is missing from one function to a another uh, very parse heavy function. So I need to put missing arg explicitly into a list. All right, I'm gonna try to make this go away. Can you see all of my nonsense right now? Yes. I want to see half of it. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know if this is all of your nonsense, but <laughs> see a fair amount of nonsense. <laughs> Sick. Okay, let's clear that. All right, so I'm just going to do a very quick and dirty what you need to know if you're not familiar with Shiny. Mm. Um, this is me spending time creating a CSS file because that's what I do when I'm nervous and don't know how to program anymore. This is our title. And for the actual components here, we have a numeric input where the user, well, sorry, we have a text input for the function. We have a numeric input. How many arguments do you want to add to your function? And then we have a UI output, which is the generic for, I want to re render my UI stuff on the server side. So everything in Shiny, you have like your UI. These are the widgets I want to display. And then the servers, like here's where I run my actual R. 
oh, and then we display both uh, expression, the expression and the code as a tree. Um, and then this is the code that I like legit just stole from Mastering Shiny, um, where you create column names for as many inputs as the user created arguments they wanted in the app. So if they say, I want two arguments, you get arg underscore one and arg underscore two, and then you map those names onto text inputs. Okay. So before I go any further, I have my, it's called funk in here, mean. And then this guy, just by virtue of clicking the number, we get as many text inputs as uh, the user selected. So that's cool in and of itself, sweet. All right. Um, now for the business of like, this is just my like code graveyard of code that did not work. Um, but I was thinking call to the first argument in call to is, and anyone like chime in, um, if I'm not making sense here. The first argument in call to is your function as a string. So I was like, sick, uh, input, dollar, input dollar sign in shiny, and then you give the name of that ID that you gave it will return the user's input. So again, because I called this text input func, all I need to do is input dollar sign func. Um, so this will return mean as a string and then I was thinking, cool, we can map through our column names the input and parse those, and then we would get our expression. But as you see here, this returns mean list of your stuff. I really want it to return mean x n a dot r m equals true. So, so that's the first problem. But then I was thinking from there, once this works, it'd be hopefully not too hard to just turn that thing into what I want to create an AST from. So maybe let's just focus on this first part. And we put a, uh, a restriction on it that I think will make our lives much easier. Instead of trying to reproduce mean x comma nar.rm equals true, reproduce mean x equals x comma narm equals true. Because the fact that you sure. have one named argument and one unnamed argument makes it's it crazy. complicated. Like okay. it's solvable, but it makes it much more complicated. Yeah, I, w I, I actually stole that example from the book. So um, I'm, I'm down for whatever. So And then I have a, a thought one level up is make them give you both the name of the argument and the value as separate fields. Cool. Okay, so I have a vision. <laughs> um, so instead of returning whenever you hit three, or two or one, you'd have arg one, and then another thing called value one. Um, value one. Okay, so let's. So that part we could do. <laughs> that part I know how to do. Maybe. <laughs> um, it's just copying and pasting essentially. So. And by the way, we shouldn't do this yet, but. Uh, at some point, you could update update this where you look at formals of the function that they gave you to figure out to prefill the arguments because formals of mean tell you the x is an argument, but then it gets complicated because oh, no. na.rm isn't actually an argument to mean; it's an argument to one of the methods of mean. So that's a bad name. When I first <laughs> saw your problem, I was like, "Can I just run get on the string?" get the function, assign it into a thing, and then pass the rest of the stuff into formals um, instead of this map thing. Um, but I never really got time to continue on with that. So. Yeah. 
and, and we can to get to get the function Ooh. by name. Well, it's cheating because it's not doing what she wants to do at all. But <laughs> <laughs> if you just run get, but, I mean, you don't even need to do that though because you can refer to the function as a string in like formals or in do call in almost anything else we want to use past this. Having the function as a string, it's fine. Okay, wait, let's, let's have a little, <laughs> let's have a, let's hearken back to Tan, uh, Tan's talk on per. So I thought this would be as easy as um, just duplicating this code, which we could totally do for now, but I'm a UI snob and I <laughs> want the layout to be arg1, val1, arg to yep you know what i mean and i can i could do this in our in in after if we want to focus on the stuff that's like pertinent to this chapter um Press control so long as you run your app and it will save and run by the way wait what say that again control well i don't know what it is from that but Ooh. and it will save and run and if you press escape it will close your app Cool. It's not like I'm a professional shiny developer and didn't know that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So this has to be output val, and I need to make that the thing. So in the meantime, so, we could we could discuss why your original attempt didn't work. Oh yeah, actually, that's that. a good idea. Um, so it it's in the right direction, but the the result of your your uh, parse expressions is going to return a list, but call two is expecting, you know, dots. It's expecting uh, comma separated values. Oh, and you're not providing right. that. Uh, you're providing a list object. So you would have to um, diffuse your list or somehow otherwise, otherwise turn your list and uh, get it to fill in the fill in those dots. Um, so my yeah, so I had a horrible thought, which was to turn my list into one long string and then comma separate it somehow. But I any string manipulation stuff like that, I like my brain flashes like warning, horrible, yeah. danger. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. the easiest way would be to just to, to use string manipulation to build the expression. <laughs> If you get um, the names and the values as two different vectors, you can make a named list and then pass, add in the function call and pass that to do call. Do call takes a, a, takes a function that wants separate arguments and converts it into a function that takes a one list argument. But that's going, I could be wrong here. This is going to evaluate that no or creates a call say, no if you look in the chat i gave a little example um oh. but you want to say do call and then the first argument will be actually uh, call two. Oh, that's so, that's genius i love that that's brain breaking <laughs> that I, totally I fits the way you put it in the chat too the original chat because the the function is just one argument in the list so it's the first, it's the first uh, part of the list, first element. So you have to, the parse expressions part doesn't work because you need a named list. That's the so way that's that that's trash. Works. But if you changed your app the way you were starting to, where you asked the name and the value separately, then I think you could make it work. I'm not sure what happens when all these things are strings. That probably breaks in a different way. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to get it into a... Well, of course, the names are strings anyway, so that part is fine. Yeah. And then the values. Oh my gosh, Kent, can, how do I give you control of my screen? Oh, that's scary. <laughs> And so the, the big problem I think John was trying to address was that you had a 
a mixed list, right? You have one named argument and Yeah, another. I was trying to be evil. And the problem is <laughs> that there, you know, you you would have to detect that there is an assignment happening and then use that to extract the name from it to build your named list. Um, well, that's why yeah. it's um, so we can avoid that them separately. Yeah, so we can avoid that with our new UI, which I will fix um, so that one is with one and two is with two. But I still, so, so we have a list where the first one is that as a string and then we would need so then you need the name and then the values you can parse so that t comes out to true or and one comes out to the number one here's another example i'll think about how to purr these in a second i just want to like see it um but you need to get rid of the parentheses input dollar sign funk at the beginning of all this do oh, call, just call to and then list yeah so this is kind of where we're at yeah and then you're probably gonna have to do the but the, turn that yeah, into you, symbol you, yeah either you, turn that into a symbol or you can do this in two steps where you make the list and then you change the names of the list and then you right. do the that's, call which, yeah, that, that like the simple be, way is cool. Be simpler, actually. Yeah, like the simple, the it's sim like a, is using more of this chapter, but it's again getting into the stuff where you're. It's just harder. So first, just make a list of input funk input l one. I don't know what the names are. But. <laughs> Do it inside your output expression. No, I'm just kidding. Don't make it what? Hard. You don't have to put it outside in its own reactive. You can if you but want. I want to tan. <laughs> the answer to your map no, thing is to have two different columns, by the way, I think. You just like start assigning stuff inside the columns. That's not a now you want to just put the values. Oh. In, in this one. And actually you want to parse expression those. So turn it into a list, and then can and I then do the come, map? And then, no. Uh, no. no. It's got to be a map know. situation. I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, your input valve can probably just be whatever it is. I mean, if you're going to just list them, then you can put it your right Your input there, arg but... that needs to be um, parse expression, I think. Well, yeah, you could map that to parse expression. Oh my gosh, I feel like the least worthy person of being the driver right now. Um, <laughs> okay. I guess I'm trying to, how do you guys think about programming? So like, I'm trying to do this concretely and then figured I can, from here, I can abstract this so to the map sure, so like I, let's I, just leave it as that as a single thing and a single argument should we start with that that's probably a good idea i was gonna say i totally agree that's what i like to do and that is why i can never like sh programming shiny takes me forever because i can't wrap my head around how to make it concrete but then also the moment you tra translate into reactive it's like a totally different thing um anyway <laughs> um yeah so i'm i'm gonna take a step back and just hard code another text input uh blah, blah, blah. i don't care about that and i <laughs> i think that that's enough tan so you want to have a name and a value right you said no oh, we'll just not have a label yeah that's right okay should i make should I make two of these? So like arg one, or is one enough for now? Well, let's do two so we can do the main and a uh, Sick. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Come on. Cool. Okay, this is fun. Um, okay, okay, so now if you're gonna- This is all going in the garbage. And now- So, so hard code this, just say list, um, parse expression input val one, 
parse expression input valve two. Keep it really simple. And then pipe that, to, pipe that to set names. And pass that um, just the just the list of input arg one and input arg two. As the arg so just yes yeah, yeah, C put it as a in a C. Yeah, because it takes um, yeah one name vector. Yep. Cool. Um, something is yeah, very wrong. Got a mismatch so here now. Okay. Uh, so now in the do call, you need to actually make a list, take um, list of fn equals input function, and you need to change that, that list way. to a c. The word list changed to a c because you're combining. Oh wait, no, 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 no. You want argument list to be? Um, yeah, I think you want to put a. Per, you want to. I would do it with a C and a list. But yeah, maybe, right. Do so both. Put a, C, put a C in the front. C parenthesis list. List, yeah. Parenthesis, and then put a paren, close paren after input dot dollar funk. Input dot. So you're taking a list with one element and concatenating with it. Your oh, this, list. Yeah. I see. And now your parentheses. I think you probably have too many parentheses at the end. Can I, can I, ask a question of can we just make the first list argument here oh yeah totally like, would that make our lives easier yeah, yeah actually uh, uh, uh no it's well yes, but put it yeah. abort leave out well, the take out the name there of the dot fn i mean you can leave it or not, to the set, yeah. into the set names you need to put quote dot fn that's F not. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there we go and now okay. yeah you're just calling argument list princes, yeah. princes. that is so much prettier beautiful now okay it's pretty so see if does it, it work <laughs> sorry i oh my gosh there's so much crap open get away why? Oh, your, that's right. Move your faces. Have... <laughs> okay. Um, yes. X. X. Uh, yeah. Whoa! You have an X in your clipboard to make your make everything extra crazy. Wait, what? Now how do we get X equals C one and a? Because she has that somewhere oh, because up above. Oh, parsing it. All yeah. right. What did I do? What somewhere I do? in your code, you have x gets uh, c1 and a or something yeah. like that somewhere. So code. just do a control F. For, oh, there. Oh, there it is. That, yes. <laughs> My bad. That okay. was um, actually really cool to see, though, that it was able to oh. parse that x. And it's a good so warning gonna, because uh, this is about gonna, to fail. What's it going to do now when you type yeah. in X and X is undefined? It um, probably will fail. Yeah. No, yeah, but so instead of that second X, do, do, do like a C123. Yeah. There you go. Sick. <laughs> That's awesome. High fives. Okay. So now, how do we take this thing and I want this guy, is it as simple as throwing it in here? Because I think the AST is going to be of this literally, it's going to make a, an AST of do call, call to I, argument list. Yeah. I think your bang bang is going to take care of that. Try, try uh, just expression rather than... Redoing it, but yeah. Wait, what? No, you need the bang bang. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to show the AST of do call call to argument list. 
I meant you can just call the reactive expression call an expression. But yes. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh. Now do do something more. So assign something more complicated to X. Starting with that. Put an A in it. Oh. oh. Well, yeah, that too. But do uh, you know, like I, I was unlist list uh, one comma. N A and yeah. Okay. Oh. What's inline numeric. What if you just put one plus two in there? That's a good call. But I think yeah, it's evaluated yeah, it, it, it before it evaluate. gets there. You gotta start it from evaluating. You have to quote it. <laughs> yeah. You have to say put in X for one plus two. I think you're we're being a little bit misled with the true. It's it's evaluating the true also. It just happens to also be true. Right, yeah. that's true. It's literal, so it. <laughs> yeah, if you put if you put T, in... it'll say it'll still say true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to parse it. I don't know. Then it's so... going to put them all in as literal strings, which is not what we want. Yeah, to I think we quote... need to quote parse you expression. Quote it. Or or is this one well, of those parse de parse things? Yeah, not deep parse. Well, where would you do that though? Because we have this beautiful list. When we define argument list, yeah, go up. Um, Just quote val two rather than parse expression. Um, no, because that'll or, be the, or the string. string. We, need to we need to parse expression, and then we need to capture that. In, and not evaluate it, which is well. well you want to want to parse it. In you want to parse the string. You don't want to parse expression. You want to parse it. If you so parse, can we just you, do that? No. X equals. X equals. That's the same thing as parse expression. Though. You, you yeah. want text to, yeah. it is, Parse expression is literally just parse text equals as the default. Cool, I'm so glad it. I'm contributing to this. <laughs> it's okay, you've noticed that like five people up, or however many people are still here at once. It's great. <laughs> what about just expression? Um, yeah. Okay, so can the you way. tell me about Take out the Sorry. Text Can you tell me about your thought process instead of like, because to me it just sounds like you're brute force just trying different functions at this point. That is a thought process. Which is, which is <laughs> I, how I. I was about to say my thought process when I am working in Arlang is often, oh, okay, it's not expert. Is it an expert? Does that make any sense? It's not an expert. Is it quo? And I Some get better at it as work. I'm working with it. <laughs> But each time, like, I, it's so few and far between actually working with it that I haven't actually learned any of these yet. Okay, so, so I'm not alone. I was just curious because that is my workflow. What we're, what we're thinking. Okay. Yeah. No. But I, get rid I, of the text I'm kind of loving this. Um, okay. All right, let's see what that does. I should just give this like this default is give values. Us the quoted strings. You expression of string. Does that do what what you want it to do? It's not doing true. It. <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought we needed to parse because you want to change the text one to the digit one. Yeah. I think you're going to need something, maybe something like the recursive parsing. Figure out. If it's something we really want to parse or not, I don't know. I that feel like, uh, okay, okay. Wrap that in expert. What's that? The parse expert. Wrap it in expert and then bang bang. Oh my meta! But we need a bang bang because we need to, no, after, sorry, after inside of the expert. Because we don't want an expert of parse expert, we want an expert of the result of parse expert. Right. 
Try it. Try yeah. it. What do I make this? It shouldn't matter. Just not. And actually, so I, I do just T. T. Yeah. So we can see if it's evaluating it or not. All right. Looks like it is. Have you like moved focus to make it update? Yeah, it's still evaluating it. Um, and do one plus two in the first box, by the way, is our other test. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um. But look how cute the app is. It's so pink. <laughs> your, your coloring is really nice. <laughs> I like a calming UI so that you don't see the behind. <laughs> no expression to parse. Ooh, try um setting debug mode on, by the way. Maybe that'll maybe we'll be able setting to what see. what? No, never mind. Sorry. I'm thinking about the wrong thing. I was thinking about show, but that probably won't help us. Never mind. What did I call it? Showcase. But that might not be actually helpful. Oh, yeah. I think that would just show us the line that's the problem, and I think we All know. Right. <laughs> Honestly, I feel very successful that our very simple use case works. So that that code in argument list is totally capturing the like one plus two it is once we do the do call that it, it is getting evaluated uh, maybe we need sure. another expert ready here. yeah so i'm thinking either we need an expert there or we need to go into our line but let's see what we get Not that I don't believe you, but um, what? Why didn't it? No, print? you had it. It's it printed. Yeah, I mean, it it's, showed up in your code. It printed yeah. in up, your box. Go back into your shiny app. In your app, yeah. Your into oh. the new window. Dirt. Go to the. So see how it's got yeah. under your mouse there one plus two yeah, and T. Right. So we are capturing it, but then when we do the call to call two, we're evaluating it. So. Let's go look at that code because I feel like we're super, super close. This is so fun. <laughs> and I, I feel love like that. a little squirrel detective. Uh, try the okay. low argument list. Maybe. What does that mean? Call. So row let's arc. Think. So what's quote equals false there? Sorry. I just saw one of the arguments. Can you do both the arguments for do call again? Oh. Yeah. Oh, quote equals true. Quote equals true. It's just totally right there. I think that's all we need. You need mean? You, you didn't mm -hmm. actually Function type name. mean as a oh. default. Thank you. And then, <gasps> yeah, yeah, there look at is. that. But wait, why is this oh. one x equals three? Oh, because you because we, had, oh, we didn't we do that one. Because you just did a copy paste. Yeah. Uh, that's it, the quote equals true is in the wrong place. Uh, no. It's got to be inside of that quote. All right, so have that parentheses. See how our argument list has two parentheses after it? Yeah, there you go. Or try. Um, I think this would do it. Oh no! Okay, sorry. Anyway, got that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes! All right. It's like we plan this. It is five fifty nine. People, this is perfect. <laughs> this was the most marvelous thing I've ever seen, you guys. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a high note to leave on. Everyone is amazing. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs>